So if you're waiting for new M3 Max with the bleeding edge 3 nanometer process, I come bearing great news because they're still on track for a 2024 release, but it seems Apple's not going to be shifting a ton of these, and so let's delve into it. Now for those not aware, we were initially expecting M3 to release as soon as this year, but then those leaks kind of dried up and at this point, we are somewhat sure we're not getting M3 Max till early next year. And it seems we now have a reason as to why. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this. It would be appreciated. Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo in a new report says, Demand for the new Macs will continue to fall below expectations because, frankly speaking, consumers don't have much of a reason to upgrade. M1 kind of released at the perfect time because... We were stuck at home working off our Intel Max, which sure were good at keeping us warm on this cold night with the overheating chips and abysmal performance and battery life. And so in came M1 that literally fixed everything. It made the base Max great again. And so there was this huge rush and demand for these new models, but that all kind of died. Because let's be honest guys, we likely are not going to see a jump like Intel to M1 was ever again. And while M3 is certainly exciting because it's based on 3 nanometers, M1 and M2 chips are also plenty fine for most consumers. And also working from home is not a huge thing anymore because society has gone back to normal post-COVID. And so I don't blame Apple for not rushing out these M3 Max when there's low demand. They'd rather wait for 3 nanometer supply to improve and then release these machines in early 2024. Now don't let this news bum you out about M3 because if you're still in the market for a new machine, this should offer big upgrades. I know every tech YouTube on the planet has been telling everyone to wait for M3, and no, it's not just pointless hyping from us nerds for yet another small upgrade that's going to offer 0.1% faster performance. There's actually a key reason why we're excited, and that's because, as I previously mentioned, this is going to be Apple's first 3 nanometer computer chips, which should offer big performance upgrades, whilst giving us a major battery upgrade. Now I know the A17 Pro did not completely live up to the hype if I'm being honest, particularly with a lack of efficiency upgrades, but I think we can expect battery life upgrades with these new Macs regardless because Apple needs as many new selling points to entice consumers, especially during this period of low demand. And of course, for those who want to work on the go, giving them significantly better endurance would be a huge pull for these new machines. Even if there's a much more powerful GPU inside, I think Apple's gonna give us larger batteries to offset this and so I'm confident we're going to get some juicy battery upgrades. And as someone who's now had an M1 MacBook Air for three years, the battery life definitely is getting a little iffy, so yes, if there are battery upgrades, I definitely will be throwing money at Timothy for one of these new M3 Macs. But the star of the show will undoubtedly be the performance upgrades with the GPU similar to what we saw with iPhone 15 Pro. As soon as Apple launched hardware ray tracing on a bloody iPhone, it got me hella excited about the possibility of gaming on Macs. Now I know many are gonna say Macs aren't made for gaming, and yes, it's a market Apple has severely overlooked in the past, but now with the power of Apple Silicon, they undoubtedly should try their best to capture this market. And so if they can offer hardware ray tracing across the board for all the M3 Max, that's going to be a big reason for developers to optimize and make games work with Max, which in turn increases the market share for Max in the gaming world because they're actually gonna have a decent library of games. Now this won't happen overnight. There is still a long, long, long way to go but I'm excited for the GPU upgrades regardless because that kind of power in a base level MacBook Air would be ridiculous, especially when it's fanless. And yes, I know someone's gonna mention, oh my God, the iPhone 15 Pro's overheating. Is there gonna be overheating issues with the M3? And personally, I doubt this. As Apple has confirmed in a press statement, there's nothing wrong with the A17 Pro, the releasing update to fix this. And so do not worry about overheating issues with M3 because we're not going back to the Intel days anytime soon. Now the CPU upgrades won't be that major in comparison, similar to what we saw with the iPhone's A17 Pro, but that's not a big issue because I think the biggest issues with the M1 and the M2 were the lack of GPU grunt, and so that's now going to be rectified with M3. So that's what you can expect with the SoC, but which Macs are going to be launching with this? Well, that's where the confusion arises because 
Apparently, only the 13-inch MacBook Air is getting this first, so the more expensive 15-inch is going to be stuck with M2 because clearly, you should be paying more to get worse performance. Honestly, if Apple does this, it would add so much confusion to the range. So I'm hoping they update the 15-inch in early 2024 as well, and I know that would suck for those who currently have an M2 model since there would already be a new version on the market in under a year, but guys, Apple's done this in the past. Back in the Intel days, they launched a 15-inch MacBook Pro in early 2019, and six months later, they gave us one of the best Intel Macs ever made, which was a 16-inch MacBook Pro. So yes, Apple's kind of all over the place when it comes to Mac updates, and I do wish there was more of a consistent schedule, similar to, of course, the iPhone. Anyways, along with the base MacBook Air, we also hear the base MacBook Pro is going to be updated. And this just puzzles me, if I'm being honest. Why the heck is Apple releasing this? Especially now that we have a 15-inch MacBook Air in the range. We don't need a machine like this. The base MacBook Pro used to make sense because... The Air could open one single Safari tab, and then it would overheat itself to death. And so for anyone looking for a more powerful machine on a budget, the 13-inch Pro was undoubtedly the machine to get. However, now with the M-Series chips, we have a ridiculously powerful MacBook Air that chews through 4K content without breaking a sweat, and so there is no reason to have a Pro variant when the Air's already kind of a Pro machine. And I know there's gonna be people in the comments saying two things. Number one, hey, there's gonna be dumb Apple sheep who buy this because it says Pro. And that is a fair point, I can't lie. But just for lineup consistency alone, I still think they should get rid of this. And number two, businesses are going to bulk buy this because it's the cheapest MacBook Pro on the market. And to that I say, I think that's going to change. Now that we have a 15-inch share, I think many companies would rather give their employees something with a larger display. It's also the same price. And so yes, please Apple, I beg you, just discontinue that machine. Now the final machine we've heard should be launching soon is a 24 inch iMac and I'm glad we're finally getting an update to this because this poor thing has been neglected for quite a while and is the only machine still stuck with the M1. I guess unlike the rest of the range, this won't be getting frequent updates because all-in-ones are not very popular in the first place. And so if you're holding out for the M3 model, this might be the only refresh for a while. So yes, go buy it immediately. There's probably not going to be a new one for another few years. And I'm hoping there's some new snazzy colors with the M3 IMAX. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.